We've got something special for you today. We're working with multitracks for the song Open Up Your Eyes by Pete Morose, produced by Warren Hewart of Produce Like a Pro. Produce Like a Pro is a wonderful music production community that has all sorts of resources and production tips that are incredibly helpful with any DAW. By the end of this video, you'll be well equipped to use Mixcraft 10's built-in tools to mix your own music like a pro. If you would like to follow along, click the link below to head over to the Produce Like a Pro Academy and you can download these professional multi-tracks for free. Greetings and salutations. Sam here with the Common Time Productions, and we're going to jump right into a full mix inside Mixcraft 10. So today we're going to be working with some professional multi-tracks. And so we are going to set up our project. And the song we'll be working with is Pete Morose, Open Up Your Eyes, produced by Warren Hewart. So now that we've got our main project saved, we always want to double check our best practices when working with professional audio files. So I'm going to go back to my preferences real quick. Double check. In this case, I am not using an interface, so I'm going to use the full potential of my computer. So in this instance, I'm going to use the wave selection, and that is going to allow me to use the most of my buffer settings, basically RAM or virtual RAM or GPU RAM settings that I'm able to take advantage of and use for the sample rate and the bit depth rate. Now, this has high milliseconds, but we're not recording, so this should not affect anything that we are going to do within this type of mixing scenario. These are the professional tracks that we will be working with today. We are ready to bring these in. As you can see, these tracks are wonderfully labeled. We even have them numbered and organized how we would usually approach a professional mix. So I'm gonna bring these in one track at a time. I like to start on measure two. In case I need to move anything around, this gives me a little bit of room in the front. In case we have to time adjust anything, if this pops up, this will make sense later. Now that we have all of our tracks in here and we have saved, the very first thing we are going to do is a little bit of gain staging. Absolutely number one thing. Saves our ears, saves frequency buildup, very important thing. So I'm gonna select that first track, shift, select all the way down for all of the tracks, except I am not going to select the reference track. I want that at full volume. But I'm gonna bring everything else down about 10 decibels. So you can see here I'm dragging and we're watching. Bring it down. So this was probably not tracked exactly to a tick, but probably pretty close. So let's get this as close as possible, lined back up with at least a starting point here on our grid. So I'll come down to the tap or the BPMs here, 86.5. Well, that is really, really, really close. So if we needed markers for you know where we wanted to set up the different parts of the song, this would at least get our grid nice into the ballpark. You know, again, we're just getting it approximate I know that this was really well tracked, and this is going to be a very fun song to mix. All right, so let's get started into the actual mixing process here inside of Mixcraft. So a few basic fundamentals we want to bring to the forefront is we do want to control some basic EQ scenarios here with our drum set. Now, another thing I like to do is I do like to work within buses inside of Mixcraft. So I'm going to insert another track here and it's a submix track. And I think of this as my sub bus or mix bus auxiliary. There's so many different ways to talk about it. It's a great way to contain all of the wave information from the drums. So this one I am going to call drums. And so this is our drum bus or a drum sub mix or a drum auxiliary. And I'm just going to bring in the elements all right, so that is all of the tracks and information that we would have inside of the drum bus. So once we have our drum set mixed, we can control it with one fader. All right, so now let's get into the basics of mixing the drums in to our drum bus. So I'm gonna start by soloing the drum bus. 
so that way that only this information is what is going to play at the moment and everything else will be muted. All right, well, we've already got an actually, again, I knew these were going to be wonderful tracks to work with. And uh, so we're, we're going to go in and just do the basics. We're going to approach this like any major pop song, kick microphone in, kick microphone out. These would be samples to enhance our kick sound. Then we've got our snare snare samples to enhance the snare. Let's make sure that we've got the snare bottom next to the snare top. Our hi-hat, rack and floor tom, room cymbals, overheads, floors, room cymbal, overheads, room close and room far, and a room salt shaker, and the tambo, tambourine added. So it's probably an afterthought to bring in some extra energy and sizzle to the mix. All right, I am going to add a marker here for myself. That this is the start. So that when I need to, I can jump to this flag and quickly monitor what's going on. All right, so let's get a better look at this kick. One of the other things that we can do is look at them in a completely different way. When we want to look at things like polarity or phase alignment, these other types of things, and sometimes you got to bring in an extra program to do that type of stuff. But here we are really zoomed in on that first hit, and we can see that that lines up really nice. All right, we've jumped around, we've looked, things look pretty well lined up. Doesn't look like we've got any phase issues or anything like that. We'll probably do some extra cleanup later, uh, but at the moment, we're at a great starting point. So let's check the kick in. All right, let's bring in the out mic. Bring down that inside noise, you know, the, the, the click, and bring that down, bringing that down just a little bit. Brought up the kick out. That is definitely a sample to help bring out the, the high range of the kick. All right, so that'll bring really good presence and attack to the front end of our kick. Oh, there's our low end. All right. So now that I've got the levels for my kick, and this is a great starting point, I'm gonna switch my view back to small. Actually, let's go to let's go to normal. Okay, so we've got good kick information here now. But let's take it just a step further. Now, before we would ever bring in VSTs, we should always consider working with Mixcraft's native mixer channels. It's literally Mixcraft is a mixer. It has everything built in. I like 
my layout set up this specific way. Uh, this is my way of mimicking uh, a channel strip on an SSL in a way. This way I've got my volume, my gain EQ, drive, compressor, and then uh, my parametric EQ, which has got very similar characteristics to an SSL. And so this really allows us to take advantage of Mixcraft in so many different ways. I like to come in and use the very beginning stages down here. So the first thing I'll do is come to the three band EQ. And so again, we're just playing with the kick drum at the moment. And so again, we want to focus on the elements we've got going on. All right, so now we've brought in, we've got some really good upfront presence from the kick, and we've got a nice tight low end from the kick. We'll go a little bit further with this, with the entire um, drum bus, but for the moment, we've cleaned up the signal on each one of our kicks so that they blend well together. And so now we've got something that will work wonderful for us at this beginning point. All right, now let's move on to the snare. So I'm going to leave the kick activated and start bringing in the snare components. Well, I'm going to pull out the kick.
All right. Well, let's see. We're going to rewind here. All right, so here's where we get to have a lot of fun. So on the bus, you can see that I brought the gain down just a little bit. I'm going to leave my three band alone, the drive and the compressor alone for the moment. And we're going to go straight to the parametric EQ. And the first thing we're going to do is go straight for the low end. So we're going to go for the kick. Now, we can go to our charts and we will later generally between 55 and 60. Oh, we're gonna go with 63 and just slightly, completely exaggerate. We wanna hear that oomph envelope in a way. We wanna hear that thump of the air. And at the same time, we don't want to overextend on our meter here. So negative nine is a good place. We're trying to keep that hit. So again, we can come back, bring it down just a little bit. We could also bring down that impact. So in the mid frequencies, we know that we're going to go straight for around 350, 360, 400 roughly. And this is an area that we're going to cut out around six decibels. We're going to give that a little bit. Yeah, we'll sharpen that cue. Uh, so bringing out this band, yeah, it, it's going to clean up the frequencies and give us a lot more room. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right around what we would want to boost. Let's bring in some sizzle. Now, if we come back down to our compressor... Just a little bit. All right, and so now we've got a basic mix on our drums to get started with here. All right, we'll want to go back and make sure that uh, we're double checking our reference track. Stop to think There's a diamond in the dirt below It's all where you're looking It's all in how you look Is there a darkest mountain Coming into view If we take a little time And dare to climb There's 
What a beautiful song. As we can see with the analyzer, everything is really wonderful and even. What a wonderfully recorded and produced song. Again, we're really lucky. And now we've got a great visual on our analyzer to go for. And so now we've got a great idea of what we're trying to mix towards. Moving on from the drums into the bass section, we're going to insert a submix track and create our bass bus. Bring our bass tracks in, solo, let's take a listen. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do with the bass track, especially if I've got a wonderfully clean DI, the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate it. This way, I can pull off something really simple. So then we're going to come down to our mixer. And as you can see, we can pull, quickly pull up the three band here on our bass DIs. So on the very first one, what I'm going to do is basically completely cut out the highs and basically three quarters or half of the mids. And then with the next track, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm going to pull out all of the lows
And then I'm going to slightly boost the mid range. So let's see what we've got with that. Now we have a really nice low end bass with a really nice transient attack on the top end. As you can see, with just a few movements of EQ, we've high shelved, low passed, and we've been able to bring up the character of the bass just with the DI signal. And now we're able to bring in some of the saturation and the microphone and speaker cabinet sound of the bass as well, and blend that all together to get a really nice natural bass tone. Okay, I'm going to move the sans amp to the bottom of this chain because that's the last thing I want to focus on. speaker
moving on, let's bring in these guitars. And again, I'm bringing in submixes so that we can stay organized and keep our tracks nice and simple. Because we're going to do a couple of really cool tricks with the acoustics here. All right, let's bring in a great trick for the acoustics here. Because we're going to treat this in a very interesting way. So we're going to leave both of these top ones the same, but each one of the bottom ones, we're going to come in and we're going to just use something super simple. And, oh, let's just use, let's use a clap. Yeah, let's use the classic, classic reefer. Native to mix, mix craft. Vocal hall should work perfect.
that's the one. Well, we've gotten pretty darn far here. Uh, let's see, all the way through to the guitars. So I think this is another good saving point. The next thing we're going to address are the pianos and the synthesizers. So again, we're going to insert a track, submix. Bring that in. All right, the first thing with the piano is I'm going to duplicate it and I am going to split it into mono stereo. So I'm going to make one left, one of them right, come over to my panning field, and I'm going to pan between 60 and 70. And this will give me quite a sweet piano width system here. All right, let's check this out.
Okay. Oh, now we've got the pianos and synths under control. Now let's bring in the vocals. So again, we're going to go to our submix track. And we're going to bring in another one for Robin's background vocals. Stop to think There's a diamond in the blue It's all where you're looking It's all in how you know Is there a darkest mountain Coming into view If we take a little time And dare to climb There's hope for me and you It's all in how you're looking it's all in how you look Open up your eyes And you will find It's a big old world And it's yours and it's mine Open up your eyes
Let's bring everything in, unsoloed, find out where we're at, and see how we've done. Have you been to the bottom of the canyon, to the bottom of all alone? Did you ever stop to think There's a diamond in the dirt below It's all where you're looking It's all in how you look Is there the darkest mountain Coming into view Take a little time and dare to climb There's hope for me and you It's all in how you look All and how do you look? Open up your eyes And you will find It's a big old world And it's yours and it's mine Open up your eyes
to the bottom of the canyon, to the bottom of all alone. Did you ever stop to think there's a diamond in the dirt below? It's all where you're looking. It's all in how you look. Is there a darkest mountain coming into view? If we take a little time and dare to climb, there's hope for me and you. It's all in how you're looking. It's all in how. Have you been to the bottom of the canyon? To the bottom of all alone? Did you ever stop to think? There's a diamond in the dirt below. It's all where you're looking. It's all in how you look. Is there a darkest mountain? Take a little time and dare to climb. There's hope for me and you. It's all in how you're looking. It's all in how you look. Open up your eyes. And you will find. It's a big old. An ocean at your cross, and now is your compass all confused? Can you hear the wind? The storm clouds grabbing you. And there we have it, a basic mix in Mixcraft 10 using the primary mixer channel strip and native plugins. We used Voxengo Spectral Analyzer to look at our reference track and then our mix track to make sure that we were as close as possible. From here, we would bounce down a stereo mix of this as a wave, save our changes of course, so we'll bring down the analyzer and do Bottom a quick A, B. Alone. Did you ever stop to think, there's a diamond in the dirt below, it's all where you're looking, it's all in hell. mountain coming into view if we take a little time and dare to bottom of the canyon to the bottom of all alone did you ever stop to think there's a diamond in the dirt below it's 
It's all where you're looking It's all in how you look Is there the darkest mountain Coming into view Take a little time and dare to climb There's hope As we can see we are in the frequency ballpark of where we would like to be to keep our frequencies nice and clean. From here, we can do some mastering, some further mixing. But again, we've gone through a full mix. We've used our reference, tra uh, reference track to go back to to make sure that we're uh, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of what a client would possibly want. And this is a great exercise to go through to make sure that you know, you're mixing and double checking everything and making sure that everything is where it should be. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on using the SSL style channel strip mixer in Mixcraft 10 to mix a full song. A special thanks to Produce Like a Pro for providing the multi-tracks for Open Up Your Eyes. If you found value in this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching and keep creating.